Hey guys, Octane Restorations. We are back with the 1988 GL 1500 Goldwing. Today we are going to be tackling the hydraulic valve lifters or adjusters. In the rest of the video, I'll just refer to them as the hydraulic valves, but their proper name is hydraulic valve lifters or adjusters. Uh, how do I know that this was a problem? Because I went to start the motorcycle and there was zero compression on all six cylinders. <laughs> Obviously isn't good. I ruled out timing from the timing belts, so this was the next option. And by hydraulic, I mean oil driven. These hydraulic lifters actually have oil that goes through them. It's a pretty complicated process, but you know, why make it easy? <laughs> On each side of the engine, you're gonna have six hydraulic lifters, one for each intake and exhaust valve. The advantages of a hydraulic lifter is that oil isn't compressible so it can take out any of the slack of the engine by oil filling these hydraulic lifters you know whenever pressure is applied to them the liquid doesn't compress so it holds tension if that makes sense so there's pretty much 12 of these on this motorcycle there's one for each like i said intake and exhaust valve symptoms of this can be poor running engines if it's only one or two cylinders or in my case it can be zero compression on any cylinder. And this bike has been sitting for quite some time. There are some remedies that some people have tried successfully, such as putting sea foam in the crankcase. And sometimes that's enough to loosen up those hydraulic valves, but it wasn't in my case. So what I'm doing is I'm disassembling the motorcycle right now to get to the valve covers. So you gotta take off pretty much everything I just did. You gotta take off the engine guards right here and that allow you to get to the valve covers. Another tip I saw was rotating the rear tire of the motorcycle a third of the way, so like 120 degrees, and then letting it sit for two or three hours and then doing it again. And sometimes that's enough for all the oil to drain out of the hydraulic lifters. But in my case, it wasn't. So we're gonna manually unstick them with some forceful persuasion. I do like to put bolts back after I take something off. <laughs> Just helps me keep track of where they are. On the valve cover caps, on this hex, they have little rubber grommets inside of there to protect them from getting dirt and grime and stuff. So I just use a fly blade screwdriver to take those out. I believe this was maybe a six millimeter. All things considered, these things shouldn't be very tight. I didn't show it in this video, but whenever I was re-tightening them and putting them back on, I did have a problem with snapping one of them off. I just put a little too much force, and so I had to use an extractor to get it out. All in all, it wasn't that big of a deal. It took an extra about an hour of work, but just a heads up, <laughs> don't over-tighten these. I had to get some extra bolts off eBay. You don't have to take this part off. I did, but... It helps with the gasket that's on it to take it off, but you don't have to. You can leave this part on right here.
if you made it here, congratulations. I know it can look intimidating. <laughs> but once you figure out what's underneath there, it's it's not. So like I was saying, there's three hydraulic lifters on the top and three on the bottom, one for each intake and exhaust. But just for now, whenever you take all six of them off to decompress them, to restore them, I would recommend doing the top three at one time and then the bottom three at one time. The first time I did it, I did one individually. So the Allen head that holds them inside, there will be washers on some of them. Some of them might have two or three washers, but some of them may only have one. So these caps, like I just took off right there, it's really important to note which one is which and not to get them mixed up. I just use a magnet to pull them up out of there. This is just a little kerosene. So kerosene is a solvent, but it's also an oil. So it leaves kind of a film on there and it won't hurt any rubber pieces or anything like that. So that's why I'm choosing to use kerosene because it'll still clean it, but it also is technically an oil. This is what they look like up close. This is one of the hydraulic valve lifters or adjusters on the top. There we go, there's focused. So on the top of it, as you can see, it's open. So the ones on the bottom will not be open. They'll have a little cap on them. Don't lose that cap, you can take it off. But so there's the little hole that the oil goes inside. It's pretty, you know, genius idea actually. But if it sits for 20 years, it can cause problems like it did here. So that little top section, it should compress up and down. If it does not, then it is stuck, which is the problem I'm having. But that's what they look like. And the ones on the top, you'll be able to stick the top of the syringe into it and push kerosene through. Right now I'm just cleaning the outside. So you see how it has that hole that the syringe goes into? The lifters on the top have that hole and no cap. The ones on the bottom, there's a little cover on top of it that covers that hole that you can just pull off. I don't know what happens if you don't put it back on, <laughs> but I'd recommend if Honda has a reason for the cap on the bottom lifters, then you know I'd, I'd put it back on. So I'm just cleaning it through with the kerosene and then I'll take it to the vise. Really? Gonna clean them all with kerosene first. So this is the orientation that they go in. The fat part of them goes down on the bottom and the skinny part goes up and they just drop in there. You might have to forcefully persuade them to, <laughs> but that's how they go in. And again, I'm not fully tightening these because we gotta we gotta compress them on the vise to loosen them up. And this magnet I use, I believe I got it from a dollar store. Maybe paid a buck, buck twenty-five for it. But it's the perfect size for getting in there and just yanking them out. Again, this is one of the top ones that I was telling you about. That little hole's what the oil goes into. And that big hole, like I was saying, the ones on the bottom will have a cap over that. That is the best way I can explain it until I can show you later. 
but again, just gonna clean it with kerosene, and then we're actually gonna take it to the vise. So again, the top part of that valve adjuster was seized. So what we're doing is we're using a vise to push out all of that old oil and grime and gunk and everything else causing it to be seized. Every now and again, it'll get stuck. So just hit it up on the vise. But I couldn't move them any at all. And as you can see, it's pushing all of that. <laughs> That's supposed to be oil and that is not oil that is coming out of it. But it is a process, it does take a while. There is a spring in there too. So I can actually push it in a little bit now, when at first I wasn't able to push it in at all. Some of that nice, milky, colored oil. But it's a process, you just gotta clamp down the vise more and more until you get full movement of that spring. There will be some little air bubbles in it, but mostly it's going to be old oil. As you saw, I was really able to start compressing that top part right there and it was springing back perfectly. As you can see right there, that is an unseized hydraulic lifter or hydraulic valve adjuster. You take your pick. <laughs> Finally unseized, this is what all of them have to be. They all have to be able to move that easy. The owner's manual says to prime with kerosene afterwards, but I found if you just stick them in the motorcycle, they'll self prime with oil. So that's what I do. I've got the rest of this sped up, but it is the exact same process for all the other valves. Just take some time, putting it in the vise, clamping down on it, getting some of that oil out, resetting it, and letting it just, you know, keep compressing, keep getting that oil out. All of the hydraulic lifters are the same, so it really doesn't matter which one goes in which. Just make sure that the cap is the same. Like I was saying earlier, they have different washers on them.
Now time for the bottom half. Normally they'll just fall out with a little persuasion. <laughs> Normally you don't have to use a magnet to go fishing. So as you can see, that's what it looks like. It looks pretty similar, but on the top, there is a cap, like I was telling you about. And those caps do fall off very easily, so <laughs> don't, don't lose them. They just, you can just pull them off. You don't gotta use a screwdriver to pry them or anything. So again, I'm just gonna clean it in kerosene and then take the rest out and then we're gonna go to the vise. Again, there's one more view of the bottom lifter. As you can see, it does have that cap. That cap part goes in first inside the hole. I don't know if you saw it well whenever I pulled it out, but that cap is what goes inside the hole. That skinnier part goes in first. So right here, I'm just gonna pull off the cap, show you how easy it is. Right there, it literally just pulls apart with nothing. And again, these have the same problem that they're not compressing at all. So we're gonna treat them the exact same way as the other ones. We're just gonna compress them in the vise, release, compress, release, till we get it adequately moving. But don't forget to put the caps on. <laughs> I don't know what it'll do, but don't forget. <laughs>
Now, once you've got all that done, it's time to put it back together. Apologies for my shop dog getting in the way. <laughs> she thinks she's the star of everything. I mean, look at her. Of course she is. She thinks the show's all about her. So as you saw, the skinny side goes in the hole. And then just put the caps on. The top ones, the fat part goes in the hole. And then the bottom ones, the skinny part goes in the hole. So the way of thinking of it is the skinny part always goes up. Now we're hooking up our compression gauge just to see how much compression this motor has now. For comparison, this was before we rebuilt all of the valves right here. And now this is what the valves rebuilt. So our gauge is starting at zero. Let's see how high we get. For a 30 year old motorcycle, 120 PSI is not bad at all. This will be way more than enough compression to run this engine. So we're just gonna go down the line see what the rest of the cylinders on this side are. Now the other side, I'm not gonna show you the other side because it is the exact same. It looks the exact same, the process is the exact same, the valve adjusters are the exact same. So I'm only gonna show you one side but it's the exact same procedure on the other side. And there's a 120 exactly two on this cylinder. Just a heads up, <laughs> oil will come out of all of the hydraulic valve lifters, all those little holes. Normally it collects on the valve cover, but since the valve cover is off, you know. But it's a minute amount of oil, as long as you check your oil before replacing it, you'll be fine. So the first two had 120, let's see what the third one has. Who would have guessed it? 120 PSI. Man, came from 0 PSI to 120 on all three. And again, this isn't an, 
a difficult process. It just, you know, it is time consuming. So we got all that done. Now we're going to go ahead and put the spark plugs back in, get the valve covers on, and we're going to be finished. That's pretty much all I got for you. Thanks again for watching this video. Uh, if it helped you in any ways, or if you like the content, please consider giving a like and subscribing. It really does help. Really does help my channel. Help grows it. More people get recommended it when you like it. And I really do appreciate it. If you have any other Goldwing related questions, I do love Goldwings and I have quite a few Goldwings. <laughs> so just let me know. Again, thank you for watching. This is Octane Restorations. You have a good rest of your day.